Okay, welcome back. Um, in the last few lectures, we've talked, to, we've introduced a particular security model called Bell and Lepadula, which is a very important uh, in the history of security. Today, we're going to investigate that from a little bit more abstra abstract perspective. All right. So remember, in Bell and Lepadula, we had this series of uh, a set of labels um, which we assigned to subjects and to objects, and these were structured things with a hierarchical component and a set of need to know categories. Now, we also said that there was a particular relation, sh relation that we could define over those called dominates, and dominates is a partial order over the set of labels. It's also the case that dominates has, and the set of labels, has two other properties, and that is if you take any subset of the set of labels, you can find a least upper bound and a, lower, and a, and a greatest lower bound. The upshot of that is that the set of labels under dominates forms an algebraic structure called a lattice. Okay, when you look at a picture of a lattice, you'll kind of see why it's called that, right? So this is a particular lattice for a particular set of labels, right? In this case, the hierarchical components are H and L, standing for high and low, so high is greater than low, and we have two need-to-know categories, A and B. So I, I drew actually part of the lattice here, and the arrows represent part of the dominates relation over this set of labels. So for example, if an arrow goes from uh, one label to another, x to y, what that means is that x, is, x dominates y. Excuse me, the other way around, y dominates x, right. And so I didn't draw all the arrows in this because the, the diagram would have been particularly messy. In particular, I left out the reflexive arrows, so each, each level is, uh, is able to interfere with or send information to itself, or dominates itself is another way of saying that. And also, remember that dominates is transitive, so that means if x dominates y and y dominates z, then x dominates z. And so, uh, if you've got a path within the graph from x to y, then there should actually be an arrow directly from x to y, but we just left that out. Okay, right. So this, this is a particular lattice for that particular set of, um, of labels. Right, so what does it mean? Well, if you think about it, a path within this graph uh, from, say, L1 to L2, as, as you see here, what does that mean? It means that L2 dominates L1. But it also means something sort of operationally in terms of Bell and Lepadula. It means that information is allowed to flow from L1 up to L2, right? So how can it flow? Well, it can flow in one of two ways according to Bell and Lepadula. Either L2, which is the higher level, can read an object at level L1 and thereby pull the information up, or a subject at L1 can push the information up to L2 by writing an object at the higher level. Remember, pulling the information up or reading is allowed by simple security. Pushing it up is allowed by uh, the star property, right? And if, if L2 didn't dominate L1, then it shouldn't be possible for there to be information flow from L1 up to L2. Right. So what does that say then that we're really trying to accomplish in Bell and Lepadula? So remember what we're really trying to accomplish we call the meta policy of the system. So what is the meta policy of, L of Bell and Lepadula? Well, you can think of it in terms of this lattice of labels. It should only be the case in a Bell and Lepadula system that information flows upward in the lattice of labels. Okay, uh, and if, if information is, flows in any other way than uh, would, that should be allowed by a path through this lattice of labels, then we know that something has gone wrong and that the rules that we've imposed are not adequate to satisfy the, or, or to implement the, uh, the meta policy. Okay, so recall that the meta policy is what we really care about you know, we, we've made these rules, these Bell and Lepadula rules, in order to accomplish something. We wanted to accomplish confidentiality security. And so, 
if we could come up with a system which seems to satisfy those rules and yet is such that we that there are flows within the system which are in violation of the meta policy then something must be wrong and we're going to address that question in our next lecture so what have we learned well bell and the padula is a collection of access control rules in particular simple security the star property and some version of the tranquility property the set of uh, Bell and the Padula labels under the dominates relation form a particular algebraic structure which is called a lattice. And so this, this style of, uh, of modeling security is sometimes called lattice-based security for that reason. The overall goal then of Bell and the Padula is to constrain the flow of information within that lattice of labels. And in particular, information should only flow upward in the lattice of labels. And then that, that uh, meta policy gives us a way of evaluating whether the particular rules that we've put in place, simple security, the star property, and tranquility, are adequate to, uh, to perform the goal that we want, which is to constrain the flow of information so that information only flows in that way. Thank you.